So for this video, we are going to be looking at something known as enzyme affinity. Affinity is just the attraction of the enzymes to the substrates, uh, which means to say, what are the chances of them forming the enzyme substrate complex and also reducing the activation energy of the substrate to convert it into products. So something that you just have to understand is the fact that just because an enzyme and substrate are close to each other, it doesn't mean that there will be a 100% chance of them to react with each other. Because sometimes the active side of the enzyme is built in such a way that it will not have enough other groups to form hydrogen bonds with the substrate. So they cannot grip onto each other to form the ES complex. You don't have to memorize these examples, but I'm just explaining that enzyme affinity just means that if the enzymes and the substrates have a high affinity, they will have a very high chance of forming the ES complex. But if they have a very low affinity, they may have an extremely low chance of forming the ES complex, even though they are near each other. So affinity is kind of like attraction between the enzymes and substrates. So in my situation over here, I'm drawing out enzymes. Notice enzyme A and enzyme B. They both have active sites which are complementary to the same type of substrate. Uh, for example, let's just say that the substrate is starch and let's say that enzyme A is amylase that is derived or obtained from humans and enzyme B is also amylase but it is obtained from, I don't know, maybe let's say monkeys. So humans and monkeys are different species, but we can actually produce the same type of enzymes with the exception that the 3D structure of the enzymes may be slightly different. So we have amylase that can break down starch. Monkeys also have amylase that can help break down starch. But the 3D structure of human amylase and monkey amylase are slightly different. You don't have to memorize these examples, I'm just showing it to you. But the difference here is, I'm just going to show you that in my example here, uh, enzyme A has a higher affinity towards the substrate, whereas enzyme B, even though they do have the complementary active site to starch, the affinity between enzyme B and the substrate is lower. So. If I were to just ask a question, um, which enzyme will be able to have a higher chance of forming the ES complex? Well, the answer just based on my diagram here is enzyme A. So if the chance of forming the ES complex is higher, the faster the enzymes will work in its rate of reaction. So the question here is, how do we actually measure enzyme affinity? The way to measure enzyme affinity is by carrying out an experiment for each of the enzymes where you have to see the effect of substrate concentration on both the enzymes. I'm going to draw out the graph, graph of initial rate of reaction against substrate concentration. And we have the experiment for enzyme A and we also have the experiment for enzyme B. Okay, so for enzyme A, when I expose enzyme A to 2% substrates, two of the enzymes are occupied. So the initial rate of reaction is 2. And again, if I expose the enzymes to 4% substrates, all four enzymes, which I've highlighted in yellow, will form the ES complex easily. So the initial rate of reaction is 4. This is a theoretical graph. You do not need to memorize this. And again, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point, repeating myself. Um, if it's 5% substrate, the initial rate of reaction is still 4 because there is a limited concentration of enzymes that can form the ES complex. So in this case, even with 5% substrates, the initial rate of reaction is just 4. And we will say that the value is Vmax. Now, for enzyme B, however, if you remember, I told you earlier that even if they are near the substrates, they have a low affinity. So for enzyme B, even with 2% substrates, only one enzyme successfully formed the ES complex, which I've highlighted in yellow. So the initial rate of reaction is 1, which is quite different from enzyme A. And at 4% substrates, only two of the enzymes got occupied, even though there were four enzymes available. 
The reason was because their attraction was very low. So have you reached Vmax yet? You have not reached Vmax with enzyme B. So with enzyme B, what we have to do is we have to give them more substrates. So let's say I give them 6% substrates and also 8% substrates. With 6%, only 3 of the enzymes were occupied, but with 8% substrates, finally all the enzymes are occupied. So in this case, when I draw the graph for enzyme B, however, it's slightly different. We can still reach the same Vmax, but we reached it much later for enzyme B at a much higher concentration. So in this case, by just looking at the graph, you will know immediately that enzyme A has a higher attraction to the substrates because they can form the Vmax much earlier, but enzyme B has a lower attraction or affinity to the substrates because they, they reach the Vmax at a much higher substrate concentration. But to further quantify this, we will have to determine something known as the michaelis menten constant, which is the Km value. Not kilometers, by the way. So the Km value, or the michaelis menten constant, is basically the concentration of substrates required to reach half of the Vmax value. What do I mean by that? For enzyme A, the Vmax value was 4, so half of Vmax is 1 over 2 of the Vmax, which is 4 divided by 2, and you must determine the substrate concentration for that. So the substrate concentration is you need 2% of the substrates to reach half Vmax for enzyme A, which means to say you only needed 2% of the substrates for 50% of the enzymes to be fully occupied in the reaction. But for enzyme B, the Vmax value is also 4, and half Vmax is 2, but the Km value in this case is 4%, which means to say you needed 4% substrate to reach half Vmax for enzyme B. So the Km value for enzyme A is 2%, and the Km value for enzyme B is 4%. So immediately students go, okay, I kind of see this point. This is easy, but what does this tell me? You see, you needed a low amount of substrates to occupy 50% of the enzymes for enzyme A. But you needed a higher concentration of substrates to reach 50% enzyme saturation for enzyme B. So based on this value and the diagram I'm showing you here, the lower the Km value, the higher the enzyme affinity. Because that's the logic of it. Because if you just needed a very low concentration of substrates and they can easily bind to the enzymes, that means that they have an extremely high affinity. But by even giving so much substrates to enzyme B, you only by giving more substrates, I was able to reach the same occupancy of the enzyme. Which means to say enzyme B and the substrate don't really uh, love each other or they don't have a high affinity for each other. So that's what enzyme affinity is all about. Enzyme affinity is just basically about seeing which enzyme has a higher affinity to which substrate. The lower the Km value, the higher the enzyme affinity. And always remember that the Km value is the substrate concentration required to reach half of Vmax. That's basically what we have to know about this.